What's up everybody, Grant here from Spectre Racing. So when you think 335s, you think, man, those are big ass tires, and well they are, and you think you'd have unlimited grip. Well there are some situations where that's not necessarily true, and you're going to run into some problems that I did not expect. So let's get into it. So if you don't know, I uh, Axtang here is a 2008 GT, uh, supercharger, motion control suspension, too much to go over. You can see the build list on our website. Uh, it has 18 by 12 Forge Star F14 uh, wheels and 335 3018 Hoosier A7 tires. So the the wheelbase is I think like 80 inches now. It's it's insane. It barely fits in my trailer. I have about a half an inch on each side. So if you watch the first video, you see uh, first event went pretty good. It only spun out like once. You know, even with 335s. Uh, second event uh, went pretty much the same. It, it, the conditions were pretty much the same. It was a little bit warmer in the first day, so a little bit more traction. The surface at Amelia is not that great for testing because it's kind of a loose, broken, sandy surface. And uh, you really just don't get the full use out of the Hoosiers because they don't really heat up that great. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So moving on to the firm. Well, the firm is one of my favorite locations. Uh, we post our own track day there. Uh, been there many times, and actually knowing the course actually kind of worked to my disadvantage at this event. So uh, they, you can see in the course here that they uh, placed an apex cone, uh, kind of off center where you would run the apex uh, if you're doing track day. So I had to keep retraining myself not to go that direction. But with the 335s, it was a hot day, just insane amount of grip. Um, now, I did end up not having a clean run at all. I kept, uh, you know, the, the car is just almost five inches wider, I think, now. So, I kept hitting that dang apex cone um, on this section of the track right here. But, uh, it, just the level of grip was nuts. And still really haven't really uh, hit the limit yet when it comes to uh, being on a prep surface like at the front. So if you see uh, uh, this video right here, uh, one of the runs actually hit the cone so hard that they uh, they had to red flag me, and it's it's kind of a funny thing with the uh, the 335s because when you hit cones, the way the fender flares are kind of stuck out, uh, they end up getting hit uh, and just getting shot out the back. And I have a great video of that coming up for the next event. So moving on to the, uh, really to the title of this video is, is when do 335s don't necessarily have more traction? Well, when it's really, really cold. So back to Amelia for the, uh, the last event I went to and uh, well, I had a little bit more trouble. So we'll get there and you know, the forecast, uh, I think it was for the 50s or whatever, but it ended up being cloudy, overcast and like 45 degrees. Um, and it started raining. So, but it is just raining just a little bit. And I've been out on the surface before when it rains and since it's so broken up, the rain doesn't really seem to affect it too much. But the temperature was really the issue. Uh, set my initial tire pressure at uh, 32 up front and 31 and a half in the rear, and which is just where you want it to be, at least with my car, and so you, don't, you know the tires don't roll over or anything. And do my first run, which was, you know, no traction whatsoever, ice cold tires, uh, come back. Now usually after your first run, your tire pressure kicks up a few PSI. Mine went down to 27. So, uh, <laughs> running into problems, I was never able to heat up the tires. And uh, it just goes to show you that, um, you know, the bigger tires, yes, they have more grip, but they have more surface area to heat up. So you're really going to run into that issue when you have bigger tires, uh, especially if you don't have like a co-driver. A couple of people that were co-driving didn't have any problems with heating their tires up. We had a lot of people spinning out that day. There's this great video of me just wiping out a whole cone wall. I actually didn't manage to spin out the whole day that day, but I did manage to, to get some pretty cool slides going. So it really goes to show you that, uh, you know, if you know there's going to be a cold day that uh, your two options really should be to either have co-driver or three options maybe co-driver 
some kind of tire warmers, which I'm actually not sure how legal those are in the SCCA, um, or run a smaller tire. So, because the smaller tire would heat up quicker versus these Mondo 335 slicks. So I definitely learned a lot that day and uh, uh, definitely going to try and invest in uh, some tire blankets. Now, I know tire blankets are legal, which is where you uh, you get a little foil enclosure and you put it around your, your tire. So uh, definitely invest in a set of those because that will help keep your uh, tire warm. It uses the, you know, kind of like the, the brake heat to keep your tires warm, especially on a colder day like that day. So then finally we move on to uh, the very last event I did, Rolling Road Raceway. Now I've been there many times. Uh, usually the course design is pretty tight there. The course designer has small cars, uh, but it was especially tight because they just had an incident there. So they wanted to keep the speed really slow. Uh, some of the guys were actually running out of power steering. They were having power steering problems because the course didn't necessarily flow that great. Uh, the Mustang seemed to go pretty good, except uh, on my first run I hit five cones. Uh, second run I only hit one. Third run I managed to hit 11. <laughs> so I have no idea what went wrong there. Uh, if you look on the slalom in the intro to this video, you can see that they start off with like a, a three, four, five, and I think like a six cone lane in the slalom. And I'm just going to blame it on uh, having my buddy Nathan in there and I was trying to push it a little bit harder because he helped me install the fender flares and I probably was going a little bit too fast and I probably just wiped out like one or two of those gates completely which, you know, would rack up your, uh, your cone count pretty quickly. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you can learn from some of my mistakes from the last couple of events and thanks for watching. <laughs>